Hi! Hi, beautiful filmmakers and screenwriters. How are you today? It is Monday and it's like the summer edition. I'm sitting out in the backyard. Woohoo! I'm so excited that summer's here. I'm a total summer person. Hi, nice to see you. Um, so I'm just excited. My son is off school. Summer, it does feel like summer's began. It sort of was super sunny this morning, but it's getting a little cloudy, but I'm still outside because it's summer. So why wouldn't you be outside when it's summer, right? Um, today on Filmmaker to Filmmaker, what I wanted to answer was a screenwriter wrote to me. He watched my video about how to write a screenplay, the free training. If you haven't seen it, check it out. You can get um, into it. There's a link in my profile. So it's a one hour training and it will give you the basics of how to do, how to write a screenplay. Hi. So nice to see so many people here. Um, so this screenwriter wrote to me, he watched it and he said, that he really enjoyed the video. Um, he's written actually a number of screenplays, so I was kind of surprised that he was watching it anyway, but he was. And he said, my only umbrage is this. It always seems whenever someone does share their experiences as you have, the part I'm in need of most gets skipped. I'm reading this from my computer. How exactly did the writer get the script in front of the right eyes? Trying to beat the odds in script contests with prestige can get expensive, racking up submissions. So this is the question that I wanted to address today. How exactly do you get the script in front of the right eyes? And obviously this is a totally crucial question to ask because we don't just write scripts to like write scripts and have them on our laptops. We write them so that they can get made into movies. And you know, and this screenwriter went on, you know, talking about this. We actually had a little interchange. I wrote back to him and he then got back to me and you know, and it became very clear in that email that he sort of really feels like, you know, I need this connection, like I need this person, somebody who is going to, you know, be the right eyes, the right eyes, right? Um, who will give it the green light or whatever and kickstart my career. So I want to talk about this today. And my own experience, obviously, I came into this industry with zero connections, okay? I'm from Scotland originally. I grew up in many different countries around the world and then returned to Scotland to go to university. Uh, while I was at university, I did meet, I started to meet some filmmakers. Um, I was dating one for many years and so you know that was that was kind of one of my introductions to it so I knew some people in the British film industry but I didn't know anybody in America nobody um, and as I these were connections that I made in my 20s and I had no confidence like I wasn't like trying to be a filmmaker um, I was intimidated as hell by all of them really you know and I didn't feel like I had any place at that table so to speak so when I wrote my first script by then I was living in Barcelona in Spain and I was teaching yoga so I had zero connections to the Hollywood film industry none okay and um, and yet I got that script optioned within a year of completing it and how I did that and I think there's like a lot of like useful um, things in this is basically I the script was kind of about Mickey Rourke and I got it in my head I found out that Mickey Rourke was coming to Cannes for Sin City and I literally um, drove to Cannes, I hired a car, I didn't own a car in Barcelona, you know, I walked or took public transport. So I hired a car and I drove to Barcelona, uh, to Cannes, and I tried to meet Mickey Rourke <laughs> and give him my script. I literally had like 10 copies of my, um, hard copies of my script to like give to people. And um, I didn't meet Mickey Rourke, but I did meet a producer who was like, I love the idea of your movie, you know, like, and basically I did that thing where everybody I met, I pitched them my movie, right? You know, and I tried not to be super overly salesy about it, but I was so excited about it. I was so enthusiastic about it. Everybody I met, I'd be like, you know, oh, I'm here because I have this script and blah, blah, blah. And everybody found the story just like totally sort of compelling and funny and whatever. And it sort of stuck with them. So this one producer said, I love this idea, you know, blah, blah, blah. A few months later, he got back to me. He said, I just had dinner with somebody who's working with Mickey Work right now and he would like to see your script. And so, and that was, that producer then got in touch and said, can I read it? And they optioned the script. So suddenly I had a connection, right? Um, this question though, from this person, so how do you do it, right? You know, if, you do, if you're starting, you're outside the industry and you sort of feel like you need to like connect with people in order to get it in front of the... Sorry, we got a little pause there. I hope you're still there. Um, so the question, how do I get the script in front of the right eyes? In my case, I went to a film festival. I pitched it to everybody that I met, like everybody, talked to everybody. I had absolute single, you know, tunnel vision about getting it to people. And it, and it landed, you know, uh, within a few months, it was in somebody's hands who wanted to read it because they loved the idea. Um, you make connections as you go. 
You know, like you don't have to have connections starting out. Any of us, I was living in Barcelona for heaven's sakes. It couldn't be further from LA or from the film world. You know, so you start where you are. And if you're living in a small town, you're not in LA or New York, it's going to be tougher. But I go, you have film festivals and you might also consider um, going to a film festival, you know, whether it's to Austin or whether it's to uh, somewhere, you know, like New York or Sundance or whatever, and make connections. This is what film festivals are absolutely fantastic for. You will get access to people you would never normally get access to. And it's not about necessarily the big meetings and the official meetings. It's about the, you know, standing in the, the queue for a movie and talking to the people in front of you and behind you and like constantly pitching your script, you know, like saying, yeah, I have this script about, right? Now, I know a lot of people just don't like this idea because it means like putting yourself out there and talking to people. <laughs> then we all just have this fantasy. Then I talk about this a lot, like the fantasy that you can just you know, you have an agent or manager and they do all the work for you and they sell your stuff, you know, and you don't have to ever get involved in that. You don't have to worry about it and you don't have to be proactive about it. And I think, honestly, that that's a complete illusion. I was speaking to a very successful TV writer just a couple of weeks ago and she said to me, she said, like, she wishes like looking back on her career she wishes she had been more proactive throughout it that her biggest mistake was that at a certain point she just let the agents and managers um, take control and be the sort of like be the salespeople and that that was has been a big fault of hers and I completely agree because I think like you know the idea that somebody else will be as passionate or as proactive as you could be is insane right like really so the idea that sort of like you know, this person is going, I need this connection. I need to get my foot in the door. I just need somebody to open it for me. You are the person who's going to open the door. Okay. I know you might not want to hear that. You want to you know, you want to continue with the illusion that somebody else is going to like open it for you, read one of your scripts and open the door and, you know, and drag you into the party. No, 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 no. You are going to open the door. You have to do it yourself and you do that by like being totally passionate about your work and getting out there, sorry, um, and getting it out there, you know, and not and being relentless about it. Um, you make the connections as you go. Like for me, so after I had that one in, you know, so this one producer had optioned my script. It was amazing. Um, he got it to Mickey Rourke. I was taking meetings with Mickey and making uh, changes to the script on it based on his notes. Um, and from that, then I met somebody who's now my husband, Chris Byrne. And Chris had just worked on a movie as a military tech advisor with John McTiernan. Uh, John McTiernan is a director who did movies like Die Hard, etc., Predator, Hunt for Red October. So Chris was like, oh, you know, John's coming into town. John uh, McTiernan lived in Wyoming at the time on a ranch. And he was like, do you want to meet him? You know, want to have dinner with us? I was like, absolutely. Are you kidding? You know, legendary director. And so John said to me at dinner, he was like, oh, did you, I hear you just optioned your first script. Who did you option it to? I told him who, it was Peter Samuelson. And he nearly fell off his chair. Like literally, it's one of those like comic book moments where he like kind of almost spat out his phone. He went, what? I optioned my first screenplay to Peter Samuelson. You know, and it just made this connection between us. And this is what like, you know, it's funny when you go like connections and do you need connections to sell your work or do you need connections to be a success? Yes, of course you need connections because the industry is all about connections. But do you need them before you start? No, you create them as you go, you know, and the connections come through being authentic and being yourself and being enthusiastic and passionate about what you're doing, you know, and honest with people, you know. And so what happened for me then was like John was obviously McTee was like intrigued about the fact that, you know, that we had optioned our first screenplay to the same person, you know, 30 years apart or 25 years apart or something. And he then invited me and Chris out to his ranch in Wyoming. And it was like quite surreal that week out in Wyoming, he would give me a script to read each day, you know, in the morning, he'd be like, Oh, you know, he's quite a gruff person. He's very big and quite gruff. And he'd be like, you know, could you read this? And, uh, and we'll talk about it later. So I would just like go read the script and we would meet in the evening and he would say, okay, did you read it? And I say, yes. And he'd go, what'd you, what'd you think? You know? And I would just tell him the truth, you know, and I, I wouldn't sugarcoat it. I wouldn't lie. I wasn't trying to impress him. I wasn't trying to get a job. I'd just be like, I thought it was a horrible script, you know, or I, I think this is amazing. I love this about it, you know, just totally honest, you know, and that's what got me my first sort of real job screenwriting because, uh, after that week at the ranch, he called me up a week later and said, can you come back and work on a script with me? And, um, 
you know, I was like, of course, <laughs> I'm not going to say no to that. You know, so it was to rewrite a script. And it was actually, and it was funny, I said, which one is it? And he told me which one, and I just about died because it was like the worst one. It was horrible. And I had said to him, this is an awful script. It's, ha it's just awful. There's nothing good about it. But that's how I got my first job, you know. And so, you know, connections are important, but you create them. It's not something, and it doesn't matter if you don't have them to start with. You go out there and you're talented and you are talented, you know, and you work on your craft and you, you're honest with people and you're passionate about what you do and you're positive and, you know, all those things, you're going to get work, okay? So the idea, though, you know, the first thing is you have to get rid of the idea, though, that somehow, you know, the key is somebody else. The key is not somebody else. The key is you, okay? It's not somebody else. You don't need, it's not like, oh, if I could just get that agent, everything's going to be amazing. No, it's not, it's not the case. Even once you get the agent, it's still going to be you. It's going to be you in the room pitching the project, okay? You know, it's not like the agent. So the agent can get you the meetings, but they can't take the meeting for you, you know? So, you know, I just go like, the deal here is, if you're a screenwriter and you're like, how do I crack this code? How do I get in, you know? My thing is first, do your best work and focus mostly on your craft because I still, and people think I'm, maybe think I'm crazy for this, but I feel like if you write an outstanding script, it's gonna get noticed. I honestly believe that. Now, if it's kind of, if it's good, if it's like a B, you know, it might not be enough to break through, right? You know, like once you've broken in, then you could probably do the B script, right? And get away with it. It's kind of like, you know, like rock bands, like now, like, do you ever listen to like new music by someone like you two or you think it's pretty crap? And you think if they were starting out, would that be okay? Or Madonna or whoever, right? I heard her new song the other day and I'm like, okay, if that was somebody brand new, would anyone care? Probably not, right? But they did such amazing things at the beginning. That's what gets them established, you know? And I feel like, so, you know, when you're starting out, you know, you'll have to create things and you have to push yourself to create things that are above average, you know, that are really stand out, that are really special, that not only can you pitch them with passion and excitement, but also that people will hear it. And when the right person hears it, they want it, you know, they want to read it, right? Because this person was kind of like, you know, oh, it's so hard to get anyone to read anything. People don't want to read things that they're not that interested in. But if you pitch them an idea that they think sounds amazing, they will want to read it if they're right for it. Does that make sense? So I just go like, you know, don't underestimate this. And really, you, you have to, first of all, do your best work and hold yourself accountable. And it might seem great to you, but maybe you have to keep pushing. Maybe you have to write, you know, keep writing more, keep getting it even better. You know, once you have a script that you're like 100% like, this is freaking amazing and people are responding to it. And also you've got your pitch down and don't underestimate the importance of that pitch, right? I'm not like, I, I hate sort of pitching contests and all that shit. But I am like, the most important thing that you can do is be able to talk to people passionately and clearly about your work. So they want to read it. It's selling your script, right? So that if you meet somebody, you know, at a dinner or at a, you know, in a queue for a movie at a festival or, you know, wherever it is that you can immediately tell them about your project. Say, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I've just finished this script and I'm looking for a producer for it. It's this, you know, and you can speak about it articulately and in a way that they would be like, oh, that sounds awesome. I know somebody that would be into that, you know, and that's how it works, right? Um, so, you know, I think it's like getting away from the idea that there's this other key, you know, that there's someone who can make calls and get it read and putting it in yourself that like, you're that person, you know, you are the person who can do it. And if you're passionate enough about it and you have a really good pitch, the people will want to read it when you hit it, the right people. And if they're not responding so far, if you're like having to beg people to read it, and no one wants to read it, you know, there's something wrong with how you're pitching it or there's something like not that compelling about the script itself. And as I say, like, it is tough to hear that. I know it, you know, but like, I, I read a lot of scripts and a lot, I'll be honest, like a lot are like, they're good. They're perfectly adequate. You know, there's nothing wrong with them, but are they sort of like really stand out scripts? Are they something that would get someone really excited about it? No, no, you know? So I think like pushing yourself to do that work, you know, that's like, wow, this is really like something, you know, that's where it's going to be, you know, and then making the connections by yourself organically, you know, but this requires putting yourself out there, you know, it doesn't happen by sitting at home looking on your computer, you know, it's actually like in, you have to go out and meet people, you have to go and talk to people, you know, you have to like be able to talk about your work. So, 
Um, I really think that's important. This particular script writer, he actually said that he is in Southern California. So I just go, I feel like sometimes there it can be, I feel like one of my, something that I was lucky for in a sense was that I was coming from Barcelona. So I was an outsider and I wasn't jaded to everything and I didn't think, I didn't know there was a conventional way to do things. So I just did them my own way and I had no qualms about calling people up. I had no qualms about going up to people. I had no qualms about any of it, you know, because I didn't worry about it. And I think also that helped me in some senses with even the people that I met, like I was kind of like a novelty, right? You know, because I wasn't somebody that was like an aspiring screenwriter living in LA, right? But I was like this yoga teacher from Barcelona um, you know so I just go though wherever you are whoever you are if you're in LA every time you're in a coffee shop you're surrounded by film industry people <laughs> you know there's no excuse there's no excuse there's no world in which you can say I just don't have connections if you live in LA or New York like go out and just talk to the people in the, in the line in the coffee you know in the, your coffee shop and you will meet people in the industry and you will have connections you know and just be authentic be yourself be passionate now, let's just talk briefly about the agent manager thing because I think like this um, screenwriter is like sort of like, like if I could just get a manager, you know, um, realistically, I'm hoping for a manager. Now, I just go, um, managers and agents are awesome, but I'm going to say again, I think like still you are always going to be your biggest promoter. You're always going to be your biggest salesperson. Agents and managers that can also be a little bit lazy, right? I hate to say it. Um, somebody says... Thank you, thanks so much, that uh, gives me the belief that it's possible to get your screenplay out there using your own efforts. It is possible, because I've done it. You know, I'm always like, yes, yes, you can do it. You know, it's not, it's not impossible. And no matter where you are, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can do it, you know? Um, so let's just talk about these agents and managers. As I said before, I feel like, like we delude ourselves into thinking that once we have them, then all the answers to our problems are made, right? And I feel like that is just like one of the biggest mistakes we make because you will always be the person who's really the promoter of your work. And if you think that you just hand it off, um, you know, I, I, think that's a, I think that's a poor idea. You know, like you have to be the person, you know, you have to be um, the passionate person. You have to be the one that pushes it. And there's no doubt once you get a manager, like they'll have a strategies and they'll have openings and they'll have people to go to and I like through my manager I've got a lot of um, jobs for sure you know because he'll send you know and he knows who I am he's a great manager his name Dan Halstead love him um, you know and he'll send me to like people that he knows I'll connect with he's very you know he's he understands me and he's you know and he understands what I'm about you know so I'm not gonna like downplay that that isn't amazing once you have one what I will say though, I feel like a lot of aspiring writers spend as much time trying to get an agent or manager as they do actually working on their craft. And I think that is a huge mistake. My own strategy, I did not even bother trying to get an agent or manager. I didn't do anything on that front until actually after I had a movie premiere at Sundance. So I worked for three years as a screenwriter in LA um, and I actually got paid jobs and you know lived off the money as a screenwriter um, for three years without an agent or manager I shot my first film and then I got an agent and a manager because obviously when I had a movie at Sundance then people wanted to have meetings with me you know and I sort of feel like I always have this thing like you know if you put your time you know someone says yeah put the time in your craft if you put the time in and you create work there will come a point when they will come after you hmm like, you know, it's that old thing, isn't it? Like, instead of chasing them, there will come a time when they will chase you if you continue to work and you create great work, you know? And so, like, I just go, like, I'm not going to say, and it depends. Everyone should follow their own instincts, follow your own path, do what's right for you, you know? But I am just going to go, like, don't be putting yourself into this idea that to have an agent or manager is the be-all and end-all. You can get jobs without them. You can sell scripts without them. You can do all that stuff, right, without having an agent or manager. And once you have one, don't delude yourself into thinking that they do all the work and that you just, like, you know, like, live high on the hog. I don't know, you know? Like, you will still have to do the work, okay? Um, so that's my, that's my thoughts on that. So I hope for this screenwriter... That this helps and that is not discouraging because I've sort of feel like in your emails to me you know and I you know they just I, like I understand where you are you've written scripts I know like it's funny because I feel like you know you could be a number of my friends in LA who have written very good scripts great writers 
you know, and who are not get they're not getting made and they're not getting traction on them. And I just go like, I know how hard that is, you know, and I know also living in LA that pressure can be very huge. Like you see all these people around you succeeding or doing stuff and you've written scripts or, you know, twice as good as anything in the local multiplex, right? And they're not getting made and you sort of feel like it's all about the fact that you just don't have the right ends. And I'm just like, I just want to say with all the kindness in my heart and all the empathy, right? As long as you think that is the block, that will continue to be a block. If you think that that's what's stopping you, right? You're not, you're not gonna, you're gonna be stopped, right? If you think it's all about somebody else who's got the magic secret for you, you know, like you're never gonna meet that person. You need to realize, and honestly, and I say this with like maximum compassion, that person is you, you can do it, you are the person that can make it happen, you can get it in front of the right eyes, and you can also make stuff. And I haven't really gone into that today, but seriously, that is another option for you. And obviously, as you know, like I did eventually make a film after three years of working as a screenwriter, I made my own movie. And again, no agent, no manager, no right eyes, nobody greenlit me. I freaking did it myself, you know? And that movie went on Sundance. And I'm just gonna say, you can do it too. So if you're getting to that point of just frustration in your screenwriter path and you're like, I just wanted to see something get made, I'm just gonna say it, make it, make something. Write a script. If you haven't got a script already that's doable, you know, like write one. Think, what could I do? You know, where could I shoot it? Who could I use, right? And do it. Like don't, you know, don't just wait for someone else to choose it. Um, yes, it's so nice to see so many people here and I'm just getting some nice messages. Monday motivation, totally. And um, yes, things and things are possible, you know, and it's just like it's you that decides they're possible and then you do it. And that's the thing. If you are in the headspace of thinking that you need somebody else, you know, like you're always going to be looking for outside of yourself. The day that you take responsibility for yourself and you say, I like, you know, like I am going to sell this script, you know, then you sell it. Somebody just asked, I wrote a script. Should I wait to get it funded? and produced by someone or should I do it on my own even if it's extremely low budget? It's totally your choice. It's totally like following your own instincts. You know, you could, if you feel like, because there's things that I wrote that there's no way I could have done it myself. There's just no way. Like I just wouldn't have known. Now I could do them, but I didn't know at the time. You know, for me, I was definitely like, I wrote something that I knew I could do. You know, so I would urge you like, just do your own thinking. If you feel like it is something that you could do on your own, then do it. This is an amazing time to be alive. You can make your movie, you know, and you can make a great movie, you know? Um, uh, so like, seriously, like if you, you know, like just trust your instincts on that though. And I just go like, get quiet and just go like, what am I guided to do? Should I make this film? For me, when I, when I wanted to make my first film, it was just like, absolutely, I am doing this, you know? And there was nothing could stop me. You know, and you just, once you lock that in, lock it in, make it happen. If you're still like, oh, I think I wanna sell this, then sell it, you know, find a way to sell it. Um, I am going to be doing a course, it's gonna be a short course on selling your screenplay soon. I taught it once here, I live in Denver now, so I taught it here to um, a class, and it was, it was great, it was a four week course then, but I think I'm gonna make it shorter, it's just gonna be probably like three modules, and just like go through the whole thing of like how to make shit happen because I just like, I think it's, it's so important. And as I say, the bottom line with selling is down to you. You can do it. You don't need anyone else. It's not about some magic person who's going to wave their wand and make it happen. It's about you making it happen yourself, you know, and you can do it because I've done it and tons of other people have done it too, you know, so why not you? All right, you guys, for the screenwriter who wrote to me, I hope that helps. Please do write to me and let me know that you saw this and that uh, it was some sort of help. I hope it has not been too depressing, <laughs> you know, to hear that, like, uh, you're the one that has to open the door. But you can do this, all right? If you can write scripts, you can sell them. That's my, that's, that's it, okay? If you can take the time, if you can write a freaking great script, you can get it right, you know, into the right person's hands or make it yourself or make it happen. All right, guys, lovely to see you. I hope you have a beautiful day and it's summer filmmaker to filmmaker out in the garden. Bye, guys. Bye.